post New York City Comic Con, I think we can learn a lot about comic book speculation on this list. Let's get into it. Another week of comics that are trending in the marketplace. Post New York City Comic Con, hit the subscribe button. And at the list at number 10, we have Dark Ride number one, Trish Forstner, the one in 25 variant hitting $40. This is a horror Disney poster inspired variant. Now this Little Mermaid homage is very, very cool. And if you were watching the list last week, we were talking about the one per store. Thank you variant, which was another one of these Disney inspired horror posters. We warned the comic fam last week. We felt that this book may exceed that $25 ratio cost that most books attempt to maintain a lot go under. This is why you have to kind of use your spec glasses, your lenses, and really look at the cover and look at the book in its entirety. Seeing the thank you variant take off last week made this inevitable. We are entering into the Halloween season and all of a sudden we're going to start talking about seasonal relevant comics. If you like this spooky stuff, go check out Key Collector because there is a supernatural spec button that you need to be looking at. That's right. Over on the best comic app in existence, Matrix Comics teamed up with Key Collector to produce a list of just some awesome, many affordable key comic books that are perfect for the spooky season. Take a look at Daredevil 32. This is the first appearance of the new Legion of Monsters. I mean, Werewolf by Night landed. What other Bronze Age horror are they going to break out to put back on the screen? We also have Blade Number 5 with the Wolverine spec, with the Blade spec, which who knows where this book will go. I mean, that's one conversation for another day. However, it's a classic cover, and it's the first time that they meet and battle. Use code TOM101 for two free weeks of the best comic app support in existence. We need your support. We love you guys out there. And next on the list at number nine, New Teen Titans number 21. $20 average sales, $200 high for a CGC 9.8 for the first full appearance of Brother Blood. Mother Mayhem's first appearance, Brother Blood, the cult of antagonists that go up against the Teen Titans in the comics, is headed for the screen. We knew this confirmation as of October 2021. The trailer started dropping at New York City Comic Con. They're slated, but we're also getting Lex Luthor. No one saw that coming. Shout out Deadwood. And this is a, dare I say, perpetually relevant book. We've been talking about Brother Blood, this antagonist, this organization since the Arrowverse. This perpetually relevant book still only has 325 graded copies on the census and only 134 at a 9 Point eight. This is still 200% increase in copies sold because of the news dropped at New York Comic Con. Next at the list, at number eight, Peach Momoko goodness, New York City Comic Con's variant of Carnage number six is stunning. It's horrific. It's Peach. This is an astounding cover, and I love that it juxtaposes her Marvel style, which really lends heavily to her watercolors, and her horror style, which really uses blacks and grays and shocking images to just come together in this perfect Carnage cover. And I also want to give a big thank you to Peach Momoko. We both were able to meet her. She gave us her time. She went out of her way. For those of you who don't know, we had a break-in at the shop a mm -hmm. few years ago now, right. and in effort to raise funds for security and fixing the shop, Peach Momoka reached out to us and allowed us to release her first official U.S. merch. And that funded the repairs and so much more. We're so grateful for Peach Momoko. And her first signing in three years in the States was a little bit of a ruckus, but she gave so much of her time to not just the retailers, but the fans that I'm just very grateful. And I know the comic community is as well. Absolutely. It was a wonderful, wonderful moment to be able to meet Peach and her husband, Yo. It was great. Again, first appearance stateside in three years. I know everyone was absolutely excited to meet her, and she went above and beyond to sign for as many people as possible and did such a great job taking care of all even. of it. I know, really. And, you know, we are all looking forward to it. Hopefully next year, a little bit of the frenzy will have mellowed so people are a little bit cooler 
about the whole thing. And now at the list at number seven, Violent Cases, debuting in 1987. Neil Gaiman, goodness. I mean, with the hit Sandman is on Netflix, this is no surprise. Violent Cases, this is the first time we have a Dave McKean published work in comic books. And Dave McKean has teamed up with Neil Gaiman multiple times. He did Lucifer stuff. He did Sandman Hellblazer. stuff. He actually directed the Mirror Mask movie. You know his work. It is very, very stylistically wonderful, and it is great to see this team up on the list. $25 average sales, $30 high for a raw sale, but be careful, there are a ton of printings out there. There's an increase in copies sold of 567% for this comic book, graphic novel, and there are many editions that exist. It's a very interesting story where you see these fragmented memories of a guy who was a child going to Al Capone's doctor, and he he had been telling stories to the child's dad. And as he's an adult, he has these fractured memories coming back. It's oddly disjointed. And it's really something that comes from the diseased mind of Neil and Dave. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it. If you want to support what we do, join the November mystery mail call box. Give me an excuse to send you comics every single month, 35 bucks plus shipping. And I send you a box packed with love, exclusives, back issues, print and you support the show. It's a win-win-win. You even have a chance of getting a grail. We teamed up with Greta Lusky on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 101 with a Rita Repulsa cover. For those of you Power Rangers fans, this cover features the old and the new Rita Repulsa, and we have trade dress and virgin going out at random. Every single box will get one of either of those variants. Indeed, we have a new Rita being featured in this issue. Join the community. You know I have other things up my sleeve for this month and next at the list at number six we got to give some love to a homie who's a star wars specialist castle run comics you killed it on this spec number six on the list star wars visions number one the new york comic-con exclusive now i know people were already buying this book because it's a number one and it's a star wars book you know you're just gonna jump on these so when i heard it was 75 dollars average for a only 800 print count book from New York Comic Con. I wasn't that surprised. But then when I saw the video that Kessel Run Comics made and they actually started delving into the contents of this book, I am so excited, guys. So we have the Ronin being featured in this comic book and possibly a Ronin verse, an alt reality that may be told. We see a character that meets up with the Ronin, and there are some key moments that lead us to believe, that led Castle Run Comics to believe that this Jedi that he gets introduced to is someone that we all know. The best way to keep up on your spec game is to be following people like Kessel Run Comics. This dude is 100% up on his Star Wars knowledge and always is delving deep into these comic books. Now, follow him on Instagram. Go watch the full long form of this video where he goes into every bit of this, but I'm going to Cliff's note it for you. Okay, in the comic book, we have him called Shogun, which is a general, kind of like a leader of some type. We see the purple lightsaber. We see his hilt, and someone discovers, even though he's not mentioning it, that he is a Jedi. Indeed. We see the sweat, the beads on the Ronin. Clearly, this is someone that you don't want to mess with. And the fact that the character at the end says, this party is over means one thing. Although he looks very different than we know him to be. The fact that he mentions that he was part of a war long ago, that he was shocked with electricity, that he fell from the heights of a building. This is Mace Windu. This party's over. I love this, Tom. This is so great. And yes, even though it doesn't look exactly like Samuel L. Jackson, it doesn't look exactly like the Mace Windu, the purple lightsaber, man, that seals it for me. Now, what this means, it's only one issue, and it's a very different style of Star Wars comic, but I love the idea, if this is indeed what we're getting, a alternative lore being created. There's such a vast history that is evolving to this day in Star Wars to be able to take a break and kind of go down a samurai tale, different types of artistic styles, and now potentially different renditions of characters we know and love, I'm all in. 
Number five on the list, another book that I don't think anyone is expecting some spec on, but it's just because the new Netflix series based on the life and times of Jeffrey Dahmer. The Jeffrey Dahmer comic book, $100 average sales, $200 for a high raw sale. This is the 1992 from Boneyard Press. If you look at eBay, there are multiple sales and multiple printings. There is a first, a second, and a third printing, as well as some that are signed by the artist. This is a weird one. This is a very interesting independent book, and I don't think we're going to be talking about this one again after this week. Coming out in 1992, an increase of copies sold of 144% after the hit series featured on Netflix starring Evan Peters came and blew up the internet. Everyone is loving this series. I got a chance to watch it last week. It's fantastic. I recommend it. And they even dove into how insensitive of a creation these comics were, because this wasn't the only one in the series as well. And I think we need to take a step back to understand comic books positioning that they found themselves in in a pre-internet era. This is a lot like reading a tabloid paper like a National Enquirer that you would just grab off the newsstand. And while now bad news will break almost immediately, but people will forget a week later, this is the type of thing that it would get typed up, it would get made, it would get printed, it would get sent to shops, and then it would linger on shelves for six months, nine months until it finally went into the 50 cent bin. So we have a lot less of a shelf time now, but it's just an interesting time to look back on the terrible, terrible things that Jeffrey Dahmer did, as well as this really weird slice of the comic book industry. And now we're at the list at number four with Amazing Spider-Man 799, debuting in 2018, the year that we created the channel. We have gone full circle, Russ. Tom, when we first started this channel, we were absolutely talking about all of this Red Goblin spec and these amazing Alex Ross covers and the end of the Dan Slot era for Amazing Spider-Man. The fact that we're talking about this now so many years later, it's awesome. $4 average sales, $65 for a CGC 9.8, and that was in September. There are a total of 770 total graded copies on the CGC census, but get this, almost all of them are 9.8. 722 of them are, and there are two 9.9s, and it's all because of the New York City comic-con announcements marvel bringing the heat we're getting like a summer of symbiotes we are getting x-men narratives dark web has been forming and there are things that are coming out of it we have gold goblin slated harry osborne that is going to be going superhero and his son the goblin child is getting his own time in the pages we've been waiting for normie osborne to emerge since 2018 as a prevalent character and it looks like it's coming soon announced at new york comic-con a new red goblin series which has caused this book to spike 222 percent this is what they had to say Spinning out of the pages of both Dark Web and Al Ewing, Rom V, and Brian Hitch's Venom, this new ongoing series will see Normie Osborne receive his own symbiote at last. As a new Red Goblin, will Normie fulfill his destiny as an Osborne, or will he and his symbiote be able to make a difference for the better? I'm hyped for Dark Web. You know, essentially Marvel taking some of the narratives that weren't fan favorites, Madeline Pryor, Ben Riley and making them villains, teaming them up. We got Chasm. We got the clones going up against the Spider-Verse as well as the mutants. This list of 10 was sourced from a larger list of 20 over on the Key Collector app. And on that larger list of 20 this week, we also have Amazing Spider-Man 798, where Norman Osborn announced himself as the Red Goblin. That is seeing a 529% increase in copies sold this week. Selling for similar amounts. I know you got them in your back issue bin from 2018, comic fam. Break them out. And at the list of number three, what the hell is happening with Blade? We have the free comic book day. 2022 Avengers X-Men Judgment Day issue number one. Say that 10 times fast. $5 average sales, $150 for a CGC 9.8. Keep an eye out. We've been telling them, Russ, about the one in 1,000 Peach Momoko cover that sold for $1,105 in September. We told you that those high-end ratio variants could sometimes pop hard. Well, and this is really interesting because this was a free comic book day book, which means each shop was paying between 25 and 35 cents 
per comic for these books. They were supposed to give them all out at free comic book day. And since it's an advertising thing, a lot of shops will take their rubber stamp and stamp it in the compliments of whatever store section. So if you are finding these out in the wild, make sure that your copy is not stamped. Make sure that it's high grade. We are seeing these go again, $5 average sales on eBay. People are selling lots for more money, less money. There's a lot of spec on Blade's Daughter. A 400% increase in copies sold. And you said it. We have Blade's Daughter being featured here in comics for the first time. Bloodline, Brielle, the daughter of Blade, is speculated to be a lead character in the Blade movie that is currently in developmental hell. We found out that the director was taken off because of creative differences. Mahershal Ali, the front runner to portray Blade, is not happy about the writing and not happy about how the movie is going. They have pushed the movie back. I think a lot of members have let off the gas on Blade spec thinking that train took off. You may have been granted some more time. This is one of those really interesting things. Tomb of Dracula number 10 has been a very, very popular book for a long time. And we know that with them pushing the release date even farther out, this may be an opportunity to pick up some of those low-hanging fruits on those Tomb 10s. Looking over here at the list at number two, we have Amazing Spider-Man issue number 30 debuting in 2001. $30 average sales, 220 for a CGC 9.8 that sold in October. Newsstands, as of August, hit $425. And this spec made sense when it was just about beyond the Spider-Verse. And over the last week, we have now transitioned from the animation to the big screen live action Madam Webb has now pushed this book up. We're seeing an increase of copies sold of 675%. Ha damn. Now, I think this book would have been a big candidate for grading because it's a J. Scott Campbell cover. So that's one of the reasons why we were already seeing so many copies of this. We have 713 copies in a CGC 9.8 and six in a 9.9. Well, it's the first appearance of Moreland, who's a member of the Inheritors, and the first appearance of Ezekiel Sims, an ally of Spider-Man who's also sometimes a bad guy. There are so many Spider-Verse characters, and there's as many as 240 rumored to premiere in Beyond the Spider-Verse alone, which made this book seem like easy spec. The Inheritors haunt spider totem characters, spider individuals from across the multiverse. However, Madam Web had set photos leak this past week, and we see Tahar Rahim clearly dressed up as Ezekiel Sims, pushing this book up 625% in copies sold. Hot damn. I know you're out there. Why haven't you liked and subscribed like yet? Like that video, you comic need to fam. Make what this are you happen? doing? We like do the video. Every single week for you, and this has four been every years, single week man. for over four years, guys. We love you. All right, at the list at number one, the hottest book, the number one trending book this week is Star Wars number six. We got Jason Aaron Goodness from 2015. $12 average sales, $150 for a CGC 9.8. This is the first full appearance of Sana Solo, who later we figure out is Sana Staros. Now, in this issue, we end up seeing her, and we think she is Han Solo's wife, which turned every single person reading this book on their ear. I remember seeing her coming down the gangplank like, Han, you're wife, and you're like, oh my God, <laughs> this is crazy. It was a big like, deal. What, Han Solo? Solo married her? I thought that, you know, because at this point in time, we had already talked about this whole, like, Kylo Ren, Ben Solo. We knew there was other stuff happening. Didn't make sense. So no, was why was she it. his wife? There are 83 unsigned graded copies of this book, 53 of which are a 9.8. We are seeing a 2,300% increase in copies sold this week on the news that Sana Staros is getting her own series. Bye. Now, Sana is known to be a lover of Dr. Afra and does, in fact, bridge the gap between the Star Wars Darth Vader and Dr. Afra series. This is big news, guys. Also keep in mind, there is a super low print second print of this book with very, very few, only 10 on the census and seven and a 9.8. Plus they had so many of these amazing JTC, the John Tyler Christopher action figure covers. This is an R2D2 cover. And there were a ton of people that graded these R2D2 covers. There are actually more of the R2D2 
action figure cover graded than there are of cover A, and that's a little mind-blowing. We appreciate your time today, comment fam, as always. Geek responsibly. Enough said. Join myself, this guy, and all my homies on the best new place to buy and sell collectibles. It's called Whatnot. There's nothing better. It puts eBay to shame. I don't even list on my eBay page. It's like 20 years old anymore. <laughs> I stopped listing on eBay a couple years ago, yeah. You got to go on to Whatnot, live selling, get to know the dealers. I mean, if you don't even want to join our feed, go join someone else's. So many amazing creators are joining the app. I was just watching Rob Liefeld riff for about an hour yesterday and had a blast. We have two other videos for you to check out. We made them for you. Have a great week.